Previously on the Celtic Files. What in the name of all that's holy happened here? This place is completely trashed. It's like a bomb went off. And no sign of Celtic. I think I found the last video that Celtic was working on. I don't like the sound of that. Jesus Christ, what the fuck do you want? Did you see that? I don't believe it. Were those Russian voices? You bet your ass they were. We need to find him. I was checking Celtic's YouTube channel, and there is something that I cannot explain. Here, at the bottom of the page, look at the liked videos. Now wait just a minute. How can there be any liked videos from three days ago? If, if Celtic has been captured, what is going on here? Perhaps someone hacked into his account? Maybe one of those Russians? Perhaps. And I intend to find out. And now the continuation. Yo James old buddy. How's it going man? I am doing fine. Did you find out anything about Celtic? I haven't made much progress, but I am following up on a lead right now. What kind of lead? I can't get into that right now. Let's just say, it's a bit of a gamble. A gamble? How fitting. And if I am not mistaken by the looks of the fountain behind you, you are in Las Vegas, aren't you? Sure am. Lost a lot of money, haven't you? Not at all, but Melvin on the other hand. Tell me you didn't bring him to Vegas. Sure did. Where is he? He is lying on the ground in a pool of his own vomit. He got totally shit-faced. Oh god. You should have seen him in the strip club earlier. What? Do you want to talk to him? Just a second. Hey Melvin James wants to talk to you. But I don't want to talk to him. Tell him to fuck off. James Melvin said he does not. I heard him the first time. So you two guys have been slacking off, while I have been working hard trying to locate Celtic. Oh really? And what's that behind you there? Palm trees and ocean? I can see how hard you have been trying to find him yourself. Even I need a break sometimes. And someone as old as you probably needs a lot of them. Anyways why did you even call me? I have been thinking. With Celtic gone, there is no content on his YouTube channel. So that's where we come in. Sounds good, go on. How about a tank review of all tier 7 heavy tanks in one video? Like a super test? Okay I'm in. How about you Melvin? Melvin? I think he passed out. But there is a catch. I think we should try to get on the good side of the Russians. Maybe if we made sure that the outcome was favorable to the Russian IS, it would help get Celtic released. That's not gonna be easy. Everybody knows that the best tier 7 heavy is the T-29. Oh that's true. But I think I have an idea. I'll tell you in the studio. Oh speaking of which, I have made some upgrades to the place. And don't forget your drunken little friend. Sure thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Celtic Files. Your usual host is on assignment and we are going to cover for him while he is away. And to kick things off, we are going to give you the ultimate comparison test of all tier 7 heavy tanks. Now the majority of you guys will now probably say, hey wait a minute, there is no point to this test since the T29 is clearly the best of the tier 7 heavies. But you are wrong. And we will show you the errors of your ways. Mike why don't you give us a short history on the IS? Right. The history of the Russian heavy tank in World War II began with the KV-1, which entered service in 1939. Its strong armor made it virtually invulnerable to almost any German weapon. Except the famous 88mm gun. Its downside was that it was too slow, too heavy, and also too complicated and expensive to build. With the arrival of stronger German artilleries, the KV-1 had lost its invulnerability. The time had come for a new design. Development on the KV-13 had already begun, and that served as the basis for the IS, the goals were simple. Design a tank that has enough armor to go head-to-head -head against the German 88mm gun, 
has much improved agility compared to its predecessor, while also being easy to drive and to build. Equipped with a 85mm D5T cannon, the vehicle entered service in September of 1943, and it became soon apparent that the gun didn't have the punch needed to perform competitively. This problem was soon corrected by fitting the 122mm D25T cannon to the tank, which then was named the IS-2. So it really should be pointed out that the fully upgraded IS in World of Tanks really represents the second evolution, called the IS-2. And that is also available in World of Tanks, and it serves as the Chinese Tier 7 heavy tank. But enough of the theory, time to put the IS to the test. Melvin did you manage to hack into Celtic's World of Tanks account? Yes I did. Good lad. Then why don't you have a go and show us what this machine can do? Already loading in. Karelia Assault in a Tier 7 match. Nice match up. That shouldn't be much of a problem for the IS, unless you screw it up of course. Let's hope not. Are you going to defend the eastern side? No I think I am going to play the western flank. I want to see how good the armor is. I think I have an idea about where you are going. Could be a good position indeed. Yes but only if your team is on the ball. Thank you Mike for pointing out the obvious. Whatever. Oh check out that bulldog. I see that. He's going to light up your entire team. You have been spotted. I see that too. I am going to hide behind these rocks here. They have three artillery pieces, and I really don't want to get hit by them this early in the fight. Can't say I blame you. I hate these clickers. No line of fire on the Hellcat. I am going to move up. I need to help our T-37. Right now I would be more concerned about that bulldog. He is still spotting your entire base. And their arty has just taken the first kill. I know, but there isn't anything I can do about that. Looks like the T-37 has found an E-25. Let me see if I can get him. On second thought, I'd rather not expose my tank too much. Better to pull back. Very correct Melvin. When you spot the enemy, you want the teammates behind you to be able to shoot them. If you are too far ahead, that won't work. There, the bulldog. Get him. Oh for Christ's sake, what were you waiting for? Damn it. I should have taken the shot. But the gun isn't really accurate. What are you saying? That 122mm is a precision instrument, and any claim to the contrary is simply false. The Russians are simply incapable of designing inaccurate cannons. Really? I didn't know that. Looks like the game is finally on. Let the slaughter begin. What is that IS doing? Burning. Wow. Nice one. You better take him out. That's the plan. Gotcha. Nicely done. But now you are heavily outgunned. And watch out for the Jag Panther. Yes, I see him. But I need to keep the pressure up. AT-15A. No. E-25. Looks like my armor is holding up well. Holding up well? You are bouncing like an absolute boss. I am going to try my luck with the AT-15A. He bounced off your turret again. Great shot kid, but don't get cocky. Remember that jagged panther. That guy is never going to get me. See? Sounds pretty cocky to me. Your team is two tanks down, and the eastern flank has fallen. And that E-25 has damaged you quite enough now. You already burned through 60% of your hit points. I know. But at least our arty has taken out the AT-15A. But that pesky AMX is beginning to get on my nerves. That guy has been shooting at you for like 1000 times, and has yet to score a single point of damage to you. I think he is a lot more frustrated than you. Damn it. Only hit the rock. That Jag Panther is still there, but still in cover.
E25. Good job. Yes, I am happy with that. But I really want to get the Jag Panther. Well, you have got him now. This is going to hurt. 451 damage. Now that's a great gun. Looks like our little auto-loading friend here is tunnel visioning. I think you got his attention. That guy is still shooting at you. And is still bouncing. LOL. Gotcha. Great snapshot. Time to shift attention to the cap I think. There's a Churchill capping. Oh Hellcat. Nice. I still need to try to reset the cap. I think it's about time. Damn. But the gun doesn't have the greatest penetration. The 122mm cannon has excellent penetration, and anyone who claims otherwise is simply wrong. What on earth are you doing? You can't just YOLO like that. Damn it. I don't know what I was thinking. Well they are going to have you now. What a shame. That's not going to end well for you. Oh god. That was so bad. Indeed. Melvin look at the bright side. At least you are not ruining the win rate on your own account. And to be entirely fair, I don't think you could have pulled off a win, even if you hadn't gone full retard. But guys what do we think about the IS? I'd say it performed pretty well. Lol. Look at that E25 run for his life. The IS is awesome. That cannon is just devastating. Great pen, decent aiming time, and completely bonkers alpha damage. Don't forget the good accuracy. Huh? What are you guys talking about? The gun has great alpha, but the rest isn't all that great. Melvin, since when have you become a tank expert? You know nothing about tanks. And after your little display of idiocy a few moments ago, I don't think you wanna open your mouth. Seems to me that you are trying to blame the IS for your own failings. Not at all, but when you guys are talking about the great gun, then- Melvin, that's enough. We told you that the gun is great. We are the experts, and that's the end of it. Well look at you go. Ace tanker. Well played Melvin. Wow that's actually a surprise. 3.6k damage and 4 kills isn't too bad indeed. Unfortunately the rest of your team didn't do quite as well. And look at the armor. Hits received, 28. Penetrations, 9. Damage blocked by armor, 1950. No doubt the IS not only has a great cannon, it has great armor as well. Right. We have seen how the IS performs in a tier 7 battle with our Melvin here at the helm. Later on we'll show you how it can do in a tier 9 match. And you don't want to miss that one, I promise you that. Now though we'll test the agility of the tier 7 heavy tanks, and we'll see how the IS compares. Hello and welcome everybody. We are on highway. And the IS is about to set the time that all the other tier 7 heavies are going to be measured against. We expect good things from the IS, as the raw stats suggest that the others have little chance against it. And he is away. Picking up speed nicely on this downhill section. The IS reaches its top speed of 34 kph in no time. He is coming up on the bridge now, after which he will make a sharp turn to the left cross underneath the bridge, and then continue on up the hill. Friends this is looking good here. The IS turns in nicely. Look at that. Oh no. He has run wide. This will cost him some time. That slowed him down quite a bit. But the IS with its 700 horsepower engine soldiers on. Look at that. It is an absolute beast of a tank. And it's striking looking too. Right you are. With a specific power of more than 50, the IS makes short work of this hill. It doesn't really slow down at all. That is quite impressive. He has already reached the top of the hill. Now he is entering a section that puts the tank's agility to the test, and I think the IS will be just fine through there. 
nicely controlled. Coming up is a left right left combination. Nice. Very nice through there. Absolute clean driving. There isn't even a hint of understeer. I gotta give it to the Russian mechanics. They really did a good job setting up this chassis. But now let's see how the IS copes with the obstacle ahead. I don't think they even felt that. The IS is absolutely planted. And now they can really put the hammer down. The other tier 7s will have to come up with something very special if they want to beat this Russian bear. Oh look at that. He goes through there like a knife through butter. Coming up is a tight left hander. Will the IS oversteer? Not even slightly. That is one well sorted chassis. And also check out the speed. He didn't lose any speed through that turn at all. And the same here through that right hander. The IS has a pretty solid ground resistance, and it shows. Coming up is another left turn leading into a steep uphill climb. Let's see what the IS can do. Nicely through there. There is enough power there to push the IS out of that turn and up the hill. Oh hello lady. Mike. Would you focus on the tank please? The IS is almost at the finish line. Just across the bridge, and then downhill into the finish. I think this will be quite a competitive time. I think you're right. That was a pretty good run, if only he hadn't run wide in the beginning. The time of the IS was 3 minutes and 29 seconds. That's the time the others will have to beat. And we are off. We sped up the video so that we won't have to wait for too long for the final results. And right away the IS and IS2 have an early lead. And it looks as if the AMX is managing to keep up with them. Just barely. He is already losing ground. But look at the Tigers and T29. They seem to be neck and neck. KV3 and Black Prince are already falling behind. As the IS is entering the city. And I think there is still nothing between the T29 and the two Tigers. Well actually the Henschel Tiger seems to have gotten slightly ahead. Back to the front, where the ISs are really opening up. They have increased the gap to the AMX, but are very close to each other indeed, with the IS2 seemingly having a slight edge. But hey a look at the Porsche Tiger. He has fallen behind the Henschel Tiger, and also the T29. That's not really pigeon for a vehicle with the Porsche moniker. Um, Mike excuse me. What is a Porsche? Don't you mean Porsche? No Melvin, I mean Porsche. That's how it is properly pronounced in German. I really don't think that is true. Melvin you are young and know nothing. You too, would you give it a rest? You just missed the first three finishes. The IS2 has clinched the IS, with the AMX in third position. Oh and the Henschel Tiger has just beaten the T29 to the line. What a close finish. At the end, the Tiger P doesn't stand a chance. He is almost 20 seconds behind. And the KV3 so nearly beat him. James don't you want to show us the finish of the Black Prince? No can't be bothered. We'd be here all day. But before we take a look at another game, let's check the scoreboard and see who's in the lead. Agility is the first category. We have broken this down into the individual sections, and then add up the scores. And at the end, we shall see who is in front. The AMX and surprisingly the Black Prince have the best turret Travis speed. The Russian heavies come close, but don't quite make it. But in terms of track traverse, the IS and IS2 lead by a mile. Nothing else comes close. The Henschel Tiger has the highest top speed, but we all have seen how the IS has stomped it in the race. Fastest tank? I hardly think so. Hey but at least the IS has the best reverse speed. Good thing too, when you need to run away. One doesn't run away in an IS. In a ways the Tiger wins the combined speed of forward and backwards, but the IS2 is just one point behind. Next power to weight ratio. 
Basically, the higher the number, the better the acceleration. The IS and AMX are leading the pack. Finally, the results of the race are factored in as well. We apply Formula 1 style points, for example 25 points for the winner, 18 points for second and so on, and then we multiply these points with the total amount of points the tank has scored so far. The IS2 won the race, and therefore gets 25 points. James has the Black Prince reached the finish yet? No. It's still going. Anyways let's see where we are once we apply the score from the race to the results. And we have a clear winner. The Russian IS2. And in second place it's the Russians again with the IS. Rounding up the top 3 is the French AMX. Now wait a minute. The IS-2 is a Chinese tank. Melvin, it's made by the Russians. But it's in the Chinese tech tree. So what you are saying is that if you buy, say, a German car from an American dealer, it becomes an American car? No, it doesn't. Well, of course it doesn't. The Russians won the first round. And that's that. Moving on to another battle. Earlier we have seen how Melvin made a complete clod out of himself and yet still managed to walk away with an ace tanker badge. If you ever needed proof about just how good the IS is, look no further. Now though we have a game from someone who clearly knows what he is doing. Roll the tape. Here we have M. Harris in his IS on Mountain Pass. It's a tier 7 battle, and XVM rates the win chances about even. When the IS is top tier, it is easily the most feared of all the tier 7 heavies, and in a few minutes you will have seen why. M. Harry's keeps an eye open at the center of the map but so far there doesn't seem to be anyone, which is surprising. He has got to run into resistance any second now. And there it is. He has spotted an enemy AMX 12 ton. Looks like he's trying to chase him down. Great shot while on the move. That's a fantastic gun. What? That was pure luck. That D25T has such a bad accuracy, he might as well have fired the shot blindfolded. What the hell are you talking about? Everybody says that the Russian gun is not accurate at all. Well then everybody is wrong. Did you see that shot there? How bad can the gun possibly be? Indeed. Wow that artillery so nearly got him there. There are two of them on the enemy team and he better watch out for them. But Melvin really, you should give it a rest and stop going on about the gun. We told you earlier already that it was great, and if it didn't perform well for you, then maybe it's because... Because you can't shoot straight. Just blame the machine, it's so much more convenient. M. Harris is moving up. There is an M6 who has got himself in a bit of a pickle. 416 damage, and that is something no other tier 7 can do, the IS-2 and KV-3 excluded of course. And there is the ARL again. He seems to think that he is in cover, but he isn't. What a brilliant shot, and M. Harris bags his first kill. But now he has to be very careful. There is a KV-2, looking straight at him. As good as the IS's armor is, you really don't want to get hit by that monster derp. The KV-2 misses, and M. Harry's hits him again for a total of 757 points of damage. He shot him down hard. And the M6 goes down, and that is kill number 2 for M. Harry's. His team may be one tank behind, but here on the southern flank, things are looking good. He is really on a roll here. Kill number 3. The KV-1 goes down. But he was in a 3v1 situation. And there was nothing he could do if I am honest. M. Harris and his team have pulled into the lead. And instead of pushing on, M. Harris decides to go back. Undoubtedly he has seen that the northern flank is quite weak. And possibly expects an attack on the allied base. But first he decides to assist his teammates who are pushing towards the enemy's base. Nice shot there against the KV-85. Looks like he has another go. Great shot, 
and kill number 4. Unfortunately though, the allies have just lost their E-25. Looks like M. Harris is going to cut across to the location of the enemy IS-2, but the allied base looks rather weak. The enemy Churchill and KV-13 surely are going to attack soon. James it looks like he is in agreement with you. He is going back to base. I hope it's not too late. Should be okay, as long as the IS is as fast as you say it is. It is. The allied base is already under attack, and the tiger there does not look very well anymore. It looks like he continues to hold the bridge. Wait a minute, it looks like that jumbo is AFK. It would appear so. Now M. Harris has two targets. A Churchill which he can kill in one shot, and a KV-13 for which he will probably need three shots. He takes out the Churchill first, thus removing one gun from the fight. What a brilliant play. And now the KV-13 is in trouble. He backed off a bit too far allowing M. Harris a clean hit into his side. But it looks as if the KV-13 is more interested in killing the AFK Jumbo than engaging M. Harris. Or perhaps he realized that he won't stand a chance against an IS on nearly full health. The KV-13 is still trying to get that Jumbo. Whatever the case, he is dead now. That was kill number 6 for M. Harris, and the top gun is secured. Now top tier or not, anyone would be happy with a result like this, if the game were to end here. Note that the opponent has just killed the tiger, and the artillery has taken out the jumbo. M. Harris now finds himself in a 1 vs 5 situation. And that puts him in contention of a Cola Banov's medal. Right you are. M. Harris does not stay at his base. He knows that he has to put the pressure up on the enemy. Staying put and allowing the opponent to get into position and attack him in a coordinated effort would be the worst thing he could do, but if he can catch them one by one, he just might stand a chance. Looks like the Matilda driver on his team disagrees. He can disagree all he wants, he doesn't know what he is talking about. M. Harris goes to the location where the IS-2 was last spotted. If he can take him out, that would go a long way in ensuring victory. And there he is. Oh my god a bounce, and the IS-2 bounced as well, and now the artillery missed him too. Damn that was close. But he's got him now. You know what? That was nicely played by the artillery. He was pre-aimed at the right location. Oh the enemy is capping. Looks like the Matilda was right after all. Damn. He was so lucky he didn't take any damage there. That was lucky indeed. However, M. Harris quickly repairs his tracks, and now he will have to make his way back to the base. Good thing the IS is quite fast, so getting back in time shouldn't be a problem. The question is, who is going to wait there for him? The Cromwell, or the SU? My money is on the Cromwell. But the question is, where the hell is the SU? He is on 4 kills, and a good player too. Well we'll find out soon enough. At least there is only one enemy in the cap. That gives M. Harris a little bit more time. Oh god. Behind him. Oh that's not good, not good at all. Well he has no choice, but to keep going. He takes a big old hit right in the ass, but the cap is the more important problem right now. There should be a Cromwell waiting for him. If the Cromwell is on low enough health, so that M. Harris can take him out in one shot, he'll have enough time to deal with the SU. And indeed that's exactly what happened. That was kill number 8, and now he has to deal with the SU. LOL, look at the chat guys. That Matilda. Just LOL. And then Harry's actually stops and takes the time to respond. In a situation like this. Just LOL. What a cool customer. But now he has to deal with the SU. 
which was on a lot of health if I recall. There he is. He'll need 3 shots to kill him. Good hit, but the SU only needs 2. Whoa, he only hit the tracks. Great play. That was some good positioning. And another great shot. What in the actual hell? The SU bounces. He is so lucky. Well he's dead now. Jesus the SPG. Whoa. Holy mother of god. Did you see that? That M41 shotgunned him right in the face. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Guys can you tell me what just happened there? That went way too quickly. First the SU shoots him twice without doing any damage, then the artillery shows up out of nowhere, and derps him right in the face, and that the second SPG so narrowly missed him. I have only one conclusion really. The IS is an epic tank. Huh? That is your conclusion? Indeed. What else could it be? M. Harry's was insanely lucky. He should have been dead. That SU should have easily killed him. Well as Benjamin Franklin used to say, diligence is the mother of good luck. Yes, that. Besides, just because the SU driver could throw himself on the ground, and miss, that doesn't take anything away from M. Harris' performance, or that the IS is just a beast of a tank. You are just but hurt to see that the IS is so much better than a tiger. I am not. Oh yes you are. I said I am not. Come on chaps. Okay James. But you know what? I am going to show you what the tiger can do. I am going to do a battle in it, and then you can see for yourself. You do that. We are just going to see how M. Harris finishes off the game. He's on 10 kills already. The pool's medal is already secured. The question is, where is the last SPG? Looks like he found him. So there you have it. 11 kills. More than 6,000 points of damage, and the Kolo Banov's medal. What a fantastic result. M. Harris carried this game hard. He got almost 2k base XP, which is simply a huge result. And 6k damage? In a tier 7 heavy tank? I know, right? It's stunning. M. Harris played an absolute blinder of a game, but we don't want to forget the Russian IS, which is simply epic. Rubbish. I am going to show you epic. This is the Tiger. The most feared tank in World War II will show you the power of German steel and precision engineering. You're off to a good start. Lol. A bit unlucky there. I didn't expect the IS-3 to be there. But you know why he was already there? Because the Russian tanks in the IS line are something that the German Tigers aren't. Fast. But their guns suck. They are so inaccurate, you couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. This Tiger's 88mm, that is a much better gun. Better pen, much more precise, and a much better aiming time. Doesn't seem to be doing you much good, does it? Lol. That's already 700 hit points gone. But you still have more than 700 hit points that you can feed to the enemy. Now that you mention it, that's another advantage of the Tiger. It's got a lot more hit points than the IS. Wargaming gave it more hit points, because the tank's armor is so bad, it can't even bounce a low tractor. It's not a good sign if they have to inflate the health pool to keep it at least somewhat competitive. Melvin you got penned yet again. And you haven't done diddly squat. That's actually embarrassing, even for a tiger. I am not done yet. You just wait. The tiger will show its claws and teeth soon enough. But this isn't really a good position for it. The Tiger prefers the role as a support tank that can engage targets from a distance. Man that's supposed to be a heavy tank. What good is a heavy tank when you can't take any hits? Its turret is as bad as its armor is flat. You should have gotten the Tiger P instead. That at least has some decent armor. And what was that you said about the accurate gun? Man I am really not having the best game ever. You can't really blame the tank for that. There is another one incoming. Damn. Whoa. They really own you hard. The game is not even 3 minutes old, and you have already melted through almost all of your huge health pool. Once the IS-3 has reloaded he will take you and your fearsome German super tank out of your miseries. Melvin that's good night for you. Damn it. 
You know Melvin, that was a perfect demonstration of the tiger. I want to thank you for that. I don't remember the last time I was witness to something so embarrassingly painful to watch. No. I just played very badly. That's not the fault of the tank. How much damage did M. Harris do in his IS? Over 6,000. And how much damage did you do? Zero. And how many kills did M. Harris have in his IS? Eleven. And how many did you have? Zero. There you have it. The tiger is crap. I want to move on now if I may. One of the most important aspects of a tank is its firepower. And to see which of the tier 7 heavies is best, we pitted them all against the Russian IS. So without further ado, let's take a look. We are on the new map Overlord, and the first contender, representing France, is the AMX M4. I don't think that looks too good for the AMX. Indeed. One more shot ought to do it. Varshi blows. The IS made quick work of the AMX. Next up, the American T-29. Mike, I thought you said the T-29 was the best tier 7 heavy tank. The best? I never said that. It's alright but nothing special. Oh really? Yes really. Look, the T-29 is already down to 460 hit points. There is no way he can win this. Ah. Well, if you say so. Ha, he left the T-29 on 49 hit points. Do you still think the IS is going to win? Oh, you think you're so clever. Wow. The T-29 actually won, despite the IS rolling high three times in a row. That's a surprise. Moving on to the tiger. Melvin now you can see how your precious tiger gets punched into the ground. Aha, uh -huh, I'm sure. Driver. 469 hit points on the IS versus 721 on the tiger. I think I know how this is going to end. Damn, can't beat that insane reload. Yes. Tiger for the win. The IS lost again. I told you that the Tiger was awesome. Hey, why are you not showing us the rest? Well Melvin I have just decided that this is a completely pointless exercise. Wait a minute. Now that the IS is getting his ass kicked, that's the moment where you decide it's irrelevant? Indeed. How convenient. And I tell you what else, we are moving on to the scores for the second round. And this time it is all about the gun performance. We start with the alpha damage, and unsurprisingly, the Russian 122mm cannons dominate, with the T-29 in second place. What is a surprise however is that the French AMX leads in penetration, with the Black Prince sadly, being last. And here we have yet another surprise. The Russian 122mm has the highest accuracy. What are you talking about? Those numbers mean that it is the worst of them all. The higher the number, the worse the accuracy. Melvin tell me this. What is better, one bottle of beer or two bottles of beer? Well two bottles of course. That's right. And what is better, a car with 200 horsepower, or a car with 400 horsepower? If you put it that way, 400 of course. Exactly. Higher numbers are always better. But not in this case. You just can't. Oh but we can. We are moving on to the aim time, and again, the IS and its Russian brethren post the highest score. This is ridiculous. Are you telling me that a higher, meaning slower, aim time is better? Seriously? James E just doesn't understand. Indeed, and it really isn't even that hard to understand. But we are moving on to the rate of fire where the Black Prince scores a decisive victory. The Tiger comes in second, while the Russians round up the rear. Next, DPM. Melvin you can rejoice. Your tiger wins this category fair and square, though the Russian 122mm isn't far behind. Well I have a question. How do you add up all these points? By something called addition, which is one of the four elementary mathematical operations of arithmetic. And if you weren't such a lazy slacker, you would have heard about it by now. 
So what you are saying is that you add up the penetration, the alpha damage, and DPM with their face value. And you do the same with the aim time and accuracy? Exactly. What is so hard to understand about that? Oh nothing. Except it's idiotic. You have 2150 for the DPM, and then you add 3.4 for the aim time? That way you make the aim time and accuracy values completely irrelevant. I find it interesting that this gives the Russians an unfair advantage. I have no idea what you're on about. You know what, never mind. Based on my calculations, that way the Tiger will win. And that, I have no problem with. Oh I wouldn't be so sure. What do you mean? We have some more points to assign. Right you are. And here we have what we call the fear factor. It essentially measures the impact your tank has by its sheer presence. We assign a rating which then is being multiplied with the points the tanks had thus far. And in our book, that Russian 122mm cannon is the clear winner, it therefore gets a multiplier of 2. The T-29 also has a great gun and therefore gets a 1.8. The Tiger's 88mm in World of Tanks doesn't do its real life counterpart justice, and we could not bring ourselves to what more than a factor of 1.5. And since nobody is afraid of the pea shooter on the Black Prince, it scores a 0.1. Lol. But why does the AMX get such a low score? Because, because it's, it's French. French. Lol. With that said, we are looking at the final score where the Russians again take a convincing victory. They comprehensively outscore their counterparts, and that is largely due to the amazing cannon. That's right. It's not right at all. And why is that? Huh? You pull this little rabbit, that you call the fear factor out of your hat, so that the Russians can score a miracle win. That is completely unscientific. Everybody knows that the IS or IS-2 are very strong when they are top tier, but put them in a tier 9 match, and they are completely outclassed. Everybody knows that. Well then everybody is wrong. But don't take my word for it. I am going to prove it to you with our final battle of the day. Baiwashio shows us what an IS can do when it is low tier. And it's actually quite a strong tier 9 game, where half of the players are in tier 9 tanks. The common wisdom says, that the IS struggles against tier 9s, because of the low penetration of the gun. But if you are prepared to shoot some premium rounds, you can still have a huge impact on the game. And that's exactly what Baiwashio is about to show us. According to XVM, Baiwashio's teams win chances only 27%, but Baiwashio himself is an excellent player with a win 8 rating of more than 2500. He's going to need all of his skills to come out on top on this one. Just look at his team, and how many tanks are still in the starting area. That surely looks like a 27% to me. Baiwashio takes a quick look, and falls right back. He has gotta be careful. The IS has good armor, but this is a tier 9 match. As he is pulling back, we notice a problem. There is more bad news. The Allied 5120 seems to be AFK. You're kidding. Looks like it to me. And oh damn, the STI ain't moving either. A 27% to begin with. And then you have one, if not two tanks, that are AFK. Things have just gone from bad to worse. Baiwashio has seen the opponent's IS-8. He's got a premium shell loaded, and now he's waiting for his opportunity. Great shot there right in the lower plate. Oh then he spots two enemies right behind him. He's got some nice side shots there. That was another IS-8, and again a good hit. I think Baiwashio is trying to line up a shot against that VK, but that is a bit of a dodgy shot. Unfortunately, that one didn't connect. But you know what? The allies with two AFK tanks are still keeping the fight even. Ha! He did get the VK after all. Very nice indeed. And now the VK is either tracked or stupid. Baiwashio takes full advantage and scores another solid hit. That game is two and a half minutes old, and he has already caused 1600 damage to the opponent. Had he been in a tiger, 
He'd probably scored half that. Probably even less than that. Fiolchio is looking for a shot there, but that doesn't look too good. He sees that the VK is aiming at him, and decides that discretion is the better part of valor, and he pulls back. But now he has the side of the IS-8. Oh god he missed. Yes what an accurate gun blah blah blah. I can see it now. Listen punk, even the most accurate cannon can miss sometimes. See? This is how it's done. Nice shot there. The IS-8 seems to be having enough and is pulling back. But now by Washio spots an E-75. This is a great opportunity. Side of the turret. Nice shot. But just an average damage roll. Oh good. The allied Borsig takes him out. By Washio has the side of the T-54 turret. But not much to shoot at. You know chaps I think that one went in. Let's check the after battle report to be sure. The AMX 5120 is still AFK, and the ST1, well, the less said about him, the better. He has been camping the allied base, since the start of the battle, and now the T-54 is making a move against the allies. Great shot there by the artillery, taking out the enemy IS-8. But now the T-54 is going for him. I am afraid that won't work out for the bat chat. There. Wow look at the ST1 burning. Was that a hit by the enemy SPG? Looks like it. And either he already used the fire extinguisher earlier. Or he didn't take one in the first place. Which seems more likely. Fire. Back to by Washio who just secured the kill on the enemy SPG, with a very expensive premium shell. His team is now effectively two tanks down, since his own AMX is AFK at his base. Bai Washio is advancing towards the last known location of the enemy, but there are three of them. He has to be careful. He has found the VK. And he gets him good. The VK returns fire, and oh no, there is the M103. And now the Centurion got him as well. He's lost almost all of his health in the span of 10 seconds. Strong tank. Hey Melvin. Yes? Just shut the hell up. Easy now you guys. We just saw the enemy M103 driving into the cap circle. But where is the VK? There he is. Great shot into the lower plate, and the return shot bounces. Lol. Look at the reaction in the chat guys. That guy escapes on one hit point and calls by Washio a lucker. That's rich. Well that's world of tanks for you. Anyway, by Washio has the Centurion to deal with. Let's see how he manages that. Some nice side scraping going on here. And he gets the kill. Well played. So that M103 has just killed the allied T-54, and he didn't get spotted for it, which is a bit weird. Anyways, the allies know where he is, and they have the numerical advantage. They just need to play it cool now. That ST1 is on perilously low health. One HE shell by the M103 will take him out. Not only that, the M103 was on full HP when he was last spotted. That's not going to be easy for the allies. He could kill both allies quite easily with just a couple of shots. I like what by Wushio is doing here. He is driving very close to the wall, to see if he can proximity spot the enemy. But he didn't spot anything, so the M103 must be further away then. And again by Wushio is trying to spot the enemy, but he must be very careful. If the M103 spots him, it's game over. Finally the ST1 has arrived, and by Washio is relocating to the other side of the building. Now they both are getting into position, 
and they will surely spot the M103 now. Well seems to me they haven't spotted Jack. Great view range on the Russian tanks eh? Melvin just shut up. This shit is going down now. Finally, there he is. The ST1 resets the cap. And by Washio has his side. It looks like the ST1 is on the move, and that should be another opportunity for by Washio. Damn. He rolls for 436 damage. That M103 is really getting taken apart now. And the ST1 is doing exactly the right thing. Well played to him. So there you have it. The tier 7 heavy tank of the Russians, cleaning up in a tier 9 game. By Washio earns a high caliber and a confederate medal, and of course that game was easily good enough for the ace tanker badge. More than 5.3k damage in a match like this, that's a fantastic result, and the more than 1800 base XP are well earned. And despite shooting some premium shells, Baiwashio on a premium account even managed to make a profit. So before we have seen that the IS is very strong when top tier, and now we find out that it can hold its own, even in a tier 9 battle. And now it is time to check the score of the last category, the armor. And finally, a victory for Z Germans. The Tiger P has the thickest frontal armor, followed by the Black Prince. The Black Prince has the strongest side armor, even better than the Russians, with the AMX coming in last. The KV-3 features the thickest rear armor, just ahead of Z Germans. Strangely, the Black Prince comes in stone last. Coming to the turret armor, where the T-29 dominates with the best turret. Not only tier for tier, but the entire game. It has the best turret front and turret side, but the KV-3 provides the best protection for the rear of the turret. We also factor in whether or not the armor is sloped, thus giving better protection. A multiplier of 2 is awarded for sloped armor. And finally, we add the hit points to the total scores. Melvin you can rejoice, your tiger finally scores a win. And this brings us to the winner of this category, which is a T29. Its strong turret ensures the win against the KV-3, which has a much stronger hull. And as for the tigers, well, see for yourselves. But now we come to the final scores. After adding up the scores of all three categories, the IS-2 has the lead by quite a substantial margin. But if I am seeing this right, then your precious IS isn't even in the top three, and that despite all of your efforts to skew the results. Oh really? Well you haven't let the man finish. James go on. Indeed. Finally, we decided that the real life significance of a vehicle should also factor into the results. We award a multiplier of 5 to a tank that fought in World War II, and a multiplier of 1 for tanks that never went beyond the prototype stage. Sorry T29. But why does the Tiger only get a 2.5? It did fight in World War II. Because it lost. And before you accuse us again of being unfair to the Germans, consider that we did award a score of 1.5 to the Porsche Tiger, simply because they used it as a base for the Ferdinand tank destroyer. With that said, here now the final score. Third place, and this is a big surprise. Third place goes to the Tiger, followed by the IS in second place. However there was never any doubt as to who the winner would be. It's the Russian IS-2. It takes all that is good about the IS, and then improves upon it. The fact that it sits in the Chinese tech tree may be a drawback for some, but if you can't see past that, you can't go wrong with the IS-2. That's right. And to wrap things up, we are taking a look at all the tier 7 heavies. Coming in at position number 8 is the Black Prince. It combines low speed, low penetration, low alpha, and armor that doesn't hold up against higher tier opponents, into a tank that has to be on the bottom of our list. Though it has to be said that it can be quite a beast when it is top tier, and its agility isn't quite as bad as you would imagine. 
It might even surprise you just how quickly the Black Prince can turn its tracks. Number 7, the AMX M445. This tank has poor armor, its rate of fire is rather low, and the alpha damage is just about average. On the other hand, the AMX has excellent gun depression, only matched by the T29, it has the best penetration of any tier 7 heavy, and it also has decent mobility. But when all is said and done, the AMX's gun isn't as good as the Tiger's, and the IS is still more agile, while providing much better armor protection. It's just an average machine. It's just some tank. The best part of it is, that it leads to the AMX 5100. Number 6. The American T-29. This is a fantastic tank. It's got a great selection of guns, insanely good gun depression, and one of the strongest turrets in the entire game. Its frontal hull armor is as good as the Tiger's, and in terms of mobility it has the edge over the Tiger P. In short, this is the best tier 7 heavy tank. Mike. Oh. Yes. Well of course it clearly isn't as good as the Russian IS. Clearly. And in number 5 we have the Russian KV-3. It has the best all-around armor of any tier 7 heavy, and its gun is a devastating 122mm. What keeps it from greatness is its poor mobility. It's the second slowest tank in our test here. Other than that, the KV-3 is a fine machine. Number 4. The Tiger P. Solid tank, with a solid cannon and solid armor. Low DPM and lackluster agility prevent the Tiger P from climbing any higher. Also, fighting against experienced players who know about the big weak point on top of the tank can make the Porsche Tiger a rather frustrating experience. But not as frustrating as the Henschel Tiger, which somehow has made it into the top 3. This tank has two good things about it. First, it's gun and DPM. Both are first rate. Second, it's health pool which is the largest of any tier 7 heavy. The rest is garbage. The armor is weak and unsloped, and the engine nerf to the German heavies hasn't done this already slow machine any favors. But regardless, it is in position 3. I don't know why. But at least Melvin is happy. Yes I am. Number 2. The Joseph Stalin, or IS for short. Great agility, combined with a deadly gun and a surprisingly bouncy armor. The IS is a serious threat. It's a brawler, and it can also be played as a heavy medium tank that gets around the side of its opponents. It offers greater flexibility than any other tier 7 heavy tank, except for one. And that is of course the IS-2. It is an evolution of the IS, and as such it has the same strength, and it plays the same. It has the edge over the IS in terms of agility, albeit only slightly, and its frontal armor profile is improved compared to the IS. The IS-2 is really an IS with slightly better armor and mobility. These tweaks put it into our number one spot. So that's it then? The best tier 7 heavy is the IS-2? And the T-29 is only in 6th position? So what? I find the results of this entire test questionable. It's almost like you wanted the Russians to win. And Mike especially from you I would not have expected that. And why is that? Huh? Because it was you, who once boldly declared, Russian tanks make people stupid. Oh that. Well that was a long time ago and I didn't know any better. Indeed. So now that we have arrived at the end of the show, what do you think? Do we really need Celtic? I think we're doing just fine. Why don't you let us know in the comments what you think? Maybe running a bit long? Also I learned something new today. Mike likes Russian tanks. And on that bombshell it is time to end. See you next time. Goodbye.